Okay, so we'll talk about peppered moths today. Have you all read about the peppered moths in your book? The council is telling us that the silbuyo did for the lawyer was the silbu and the habuyo was. Okay. Um, so the peppered moths can be a good example for evolution by natural selection. The ranjung them to know the pezun show and not allow the silbu the pezun show you rest. So the peppered moths have variation in their population, in their color. So they can be dark colored like this, or they can be light and speckled and look a lot like the background of this tree. Right, so here's the light and speckled moths. Um, so the peppered moths are a great example, as you know, of natural selection at work because we observed it happen and we could see it change and then change back. So the peppered moths live um, in forests outside of England and they're hunted by birds. And normally, um, you wouldn't see many of the dark moth color. Yeah, will you go backwards? So the dark moths, when they land on the tree to rest, they're very easily spotted by the birds, and the birds would quickly eat them. However, um, when England started the industrial, when the industrial revolution came around, and England had a lot of factories that were producing lots and lots of black smoke, the trees went from looking like this to being very dark. And they observed that there seemed to be more of the dark moths and fewer of the speckled moths. And scientists hypothesize that it's because the dark moths used to stick out on these trees, but when there was so much pollution in the air, it turned the trees dark, and now the dark moths were hard for the birds to see, so they didn't get eaten as much. And scientists could do experiments where they released an equal number of dark moths and, equal, and peppered moths, and when, oh, I don't know, okay, I guess they're not showing the data. Um, they could release them in polluted areas that had dark trees and in not polluted areas that still had the light colored trees, and they saw a difference in which moths survived better. So while there was a lot of pollution on the trees, the dark moths survived, the peppered moths um, did not survive as well, but once the air started to be cleaned up um, years later and the trees returned to normal color, now the peppered moths survived better and the dark moths did not survive so well. So 
So this was a famous example where humans were able to observe natural selection in the wild. Does this example make sense to everyone? Yes. So what we want you to do today, we would like you all to be birds eating our moths. Of course, we're not going to bring in real moths for you to eat. We're bringing in candy. So, our group on their environment can spread out their moths, and then we will do a competition to see who can catch the most moths and survive. However, we're not going to make this too easy for you. <laughs> and we're going to create some variation in our population of birds as well. So as you know, birds don't have hands like us. They have to use their beak. So we're going to give you a simulated beak to use. So Marge is holding our beak tools. Some of you will get a spoon tool and some of you will get a knife tool. And here are the rules. You have to spread your moths out on your yellow environment. You will have your tool, and when we say begin, you will scoop up your moths using just your tool. You cannot use hands, and your moths have to stay on your area. And no cheating, no, no holding your area and helping you. No using more than one tool. <laughs> and we will see who's going to survive. Okay, so um, each, each group can have one bird with a spoon and one bird with a knife. But remember, you can't help each other. They can't help each other, right? And they can't help each other, right? And so when we say go, you can start hunting for food, and when we say stop, you need to stop, and we'll see how much food you got. Is it clear to everyone? Gaelic has kindly offered to demonstrate for us. <laughs> okay, you and I will demonstrate. Do you think? Alright, so um, will you say go and then tell us when to stop? Maybe after 30 We're seconds. We're gonna like fight it out right here. For 30 seconds? Yeah. Start. Ooh, how did you do that? I think because he's Ooh. holding it, it's easier. Take two at once. Stop. 
<laughs> Tot dan zei hij dan. Ja. 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 So what do you all think would happen? It can eat more food. Okay, so if it's better at gathering the food, what will happen in the next generation? So these type of birds will be more in the population. Yes. So we will probably see our population evolve to be mostly spoon type birds, right? Alright, I want to try another experiment. Um, do you all have cell phones with stopwatches on them, with timers? Yes. So what I want is for you to spread. I want someone to close their eyes. One person in your group will close their eyes. The other people spread the food out. And then when the person opens their eyes, they have to, as quickly as they can, pick one piece of food and record how long it takes them to get that food. Okay, so starting with say your hand up on your head or something, let's see how fast you can be. Make sense? Does that make sense to them? See what you have to do. See what you have to do. So, are they going to use spoon or are they going to use their hand? You can use your hands. Oh, that's the thing that you have to do. You can't do it. 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 All right, so let's see how fast we can do it. Tamu Mika, or the Mika, then the Tuguran. Okay, here. Yeah, yeah. One, I'll, I'll demonstrate, I'll demonstrate. 
Ale di kandes che bo di kandes che bo me leo mo sa ji. Okay, so when it's my turn, I'll put my hands up on my head so I can't cheat. Gelek could have a stopwatch out, I'd have my eyes closed, and he would tell me when to go. Okay, I got my piece of food, and I'll keep it. And then the next person in our group would go. And I'll record my time down for when I had it all the way in my hand. Okay, so does everybody have their time and their piece of food? Yes. <laughs> you can play this game more later. Um, so I have a question for you. I don't care so much about your times, but I'm interested to know of your food. Raise your hand if it was yellow. Okay. Okay, and now raise your hand if your food was not yellow. Oh, that Okay, raise your hand if it was yellow again. Yeah, keep doing this. See you, Rangi. How do you check on this? Oh. Chiri see you, Rangi. Yeah, like Susu Mingsu Midamra. This see you, Lendu. Like Chiri see you, Rangi. How do you check on this? Okay, so we had a lot of birds picking yellow. That goes against my hypothesis. Um, when we do it back in the States, we use M&Ms, and it's the brown M&Ms against black paper that are always really difficult to see. But you all have eagle eyes and can see those yellow candies on that yellow piece of paper, no problem. 
Kirazo in me did a chala in me, brothers. Well, still in a gate and that still chili seal due to those. But I think you understand the point that we might make if it had worked a little bit better. Um, just like the peppered moths, we also could have trouble seeing um, the yellow candy against the yellow background. And that's why it's fairly common in biology to see organisms that are what we call camouflaged. They blend in very well with their environment. So those insects that look just like a little stick or that look just like a leaf. Alright, we're trying to reserve much of tomorrow for review and practice for the exam and questions, but there's one more topic I'm really, I really want to get to. So I wonder if you all have heard about the microbiome. Okay. Do you know that you have bacteria living inside of you? Yes. yes. How many bacteria? And the millions of bacteria. Mm. And how many human cells? Any Okay, some say uh, there are uh, billions of human cells, some say million. Hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> but for every one of my human cells in my body, there are 10 bacteria cells. Those bacteria influence me. We know they can make me sick, they can help me stay healthy, um, they can affect my personality. We can do experiments in mice and take the bacteria from a fat mouse and when we put it into a skinny mouse, it makes that mouse fat. We've been able to take someone who is very sick in the hospital, about to die, and we take bacteria from the inside of somebody else, put it in that person, and they get better. So we know that these bacteria are interacting with us in a very complicated matter, and it's hard to distinguish what am I versus what am I, what are my bacteria. When we look at the bacteria, um, we can tell their species, we can look at their DNA and tell what species they are. And there will be hundreds, if not thousands, of different species of bacteria inside of just me. The bacteria that I find in one part of my body might be very different from the bacteria that I find in a different part of my body. 
Dilla the Subu Chashi Chigna bacteria Raya Jura. Dida Subu Chashi Shimba bacteria Raya Dini Lodge Hadures. Scientists are just beginning to understand how these bacteria influence us. Dilla the Dutta, the bacteria has in bacteria in the Mila, Shugin, Hundred Tigur Raya Jura, Dit, Handa, Seriba, the Dutta Chishimba Res. So, my question to you is Am I actually one species as we've been talking about humans? All this week, am I one species? Are we one species, or are we more because of all the species of bacteria inside of me? How about we have a debate? Three people to say we're one species and three people to say that we are more than one species. What do I have to do now? <laughs> So So if you say if a, uh, if a person is many species, you say whether a person is one species or many, right? So you say humans is a single species, but to only one species. If you say for one single cell, we have, they said there are 10 bacteria, so there will be so many species. <laughs> He's arguing a one species. He's many. I'm 
ทันดาดีขารลาลนะมีรอมีลาดีทันดาปะตงอจุญิริกจิกลันซีเยอรอสโดโดมีลาดีญิริกจิกซีเยอรอตะมีลาวยนะโฮโมเซเปนสลันญ
Shall we vote for who won? Tamanzu di chiga damge la su thobro lani. Dame best. So raise your hand if you think this the group over here won. Ta khilanzu ruga di thobre samge na cha kyang das. Raise your hand if you. Ta ruga shimba di thobre samge na cha kyang das. I heard one thing that was incorrect. Oh, that under the chodur chira, chodling chira, that's what you call those. The that that thing in those. A donkey and a horse can mate and make a mule, but the mule is sterile. They are not the same species. The lady that under pumbu that that ni ni richi grilla ni call those. The mares, koran ni ki pu ta ki guzar da ki yorte di che res and che di ma guzar ma tonga yo marwas rigu di ma pe yo mares. Is there a question? So horse and donkeys are different species, right? Sabha Okay. Horse, uh, donkey and mule, all these three are different species, right? The mule is half of each, which is why it can't have offspring. Mules? The mule is half of each. Mm -hmm. I don't think we call a mule species because it cannot continue on. And it under change though the long to near learning like me is kind of a different recipe to you my was chara chara day the rest. So then you hurry. Mm -hmm. So, can you define what is species which applies to all living beings? Uh, yeah, I think it's the definition of if they can mate and make a successful offspring that itself can continue mating. So that really defines species. So when you define a species like two organisms comes in contact, give rise to offspring and this offspring keeps on continuing their generation. So does that mean that in human species, males cannot breed among themselves, right? Two males cannot give rise to offspring and continue their generation. So can we say males are different species and females are different species? Mm -hmm. Well, you need one of each to make offspring, so they must be in the same species, um, but there can be, I guess, rules about who can, who can breed. When there's a sexual difference, it's just taken as a matter of fact that these two different kinds of individuals in a given species can mate, and that's the species. Uh, mm. Males, two, two males cannot produce offspring because there's another part of their species, the female, that's needed, but it's a part of their species. Dila de po ni niam do te ni po yungu yo maras ani ri chik nang lo di ge cha shi chik yo res di gu gu yo res di ni niam do te na ani po gu ki gri la ni di ani po da mo cha gu yo res tanda di. Tanda jele chiba cha swa. Karila. 
So mules come from uh, it's half from its mother and father. One is horse and another is donkey. So its mother is horse. So it has more care. Mm, so the genes and all everything is more which comes from mother, right? In mules. The genes come from both. 50-50 from both. I think a mule, it's usually the donkey is the male, right? Yeah, they're asking about the mitochondrial DNA, I think. So the mitochondrial DNA will all come from the mother. So when we mix these two animals, one is a uh, uh, chick dira. So one is dira, which we, you call female yak, and another one is bull. Uh, okay, one is the female yak, and the another one is the father is palang uh, lasa, palang, the bull or the ox. When these two interbreed, it give rise to two offspring. One is male, and the another is female. We call it zo and zomo. So this zo, the male uh, offspring, do not give, do not continue its generation. It cannot carry on its generation, but Zomo, it uh, it can give rise to its offspring. So, these are two different. So, can we say uh -huh. two different animals? Yes. A female yak and a cow. Female yak, and another one is uh, bull or ox. Do you understand this? I don't. Know. A female yak and a male cow. A female yak and a bull. Yeah, bull or ox. Palang mana bull ra? Yeah, a bull and a uh, female yak. Yes, hops offspring and we call like one is male and another is female. Zo lana poche, zomu mora. Zo is male and zomu is female. And the zo cannot carry on its generation. But the zomu, the female one, the female offspring can give rise to its generation. So can we say that this is a different species? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I'll have to read uh, about it. Um, it would be, to me, unlikely that two different species could have a fertile offspring, so I'll have to read about it. I don't know. Tanda di zomo kor langa shingi mes, che zanta di nyerik tha de roas thangbo gozung ni di di tanda di dam palang res la roa di ni de ni an zomo ki yor la roa ta zomo di yang kora bu ke yor res la roa di la du gal ta di nyerik tha de ni ki pugu ji ke ju di yang kora tanda Yuzar matong tu yur la ra, rigyo di mape tu yur la, di nga koma nyong sineta lo gu yur resti gan. Kona di la mbu? La. Di ta che shi di yur ka di gu gu yur resti. Ta che shi di mang gu yur resti. Ta che che na, ta che che na ra. So if you want to, so if you want to experiment on Zomo, there are lots in Tibet. Di ma di yur resti. Ta la yu, da ke che dan kumu ni ga yur. So are there, uh, can we, uh, in, in mules, are there male mules and female mules? 
Yes, they are. They're called a, a male is a mule and a female is a heli, right? Yes, I think so, yes. Oh, Peji, you say yes. So the female mule can can they give rise to offspring? Yes. So he repeated the same. It gives rise to two offspring, one is male and female. Uh, one is called Zo, another is called Zomo. And Zo cannot oh, continue. You have to tell me how to spell it in English. Okay, it's D Z O. D Z O? Yeah. Can I say something? Um, so I think we all need to remember that it is not like there is one moment when something goes from one species to becoming two species. It is a gradual process that happens over many years. So right in those years when it is in the process of happening, things might be a little complicated and we might not be able to say yes, no, one species, two species. So perhaps these species are in the process of speciating to be very obviously two species, but they're not completely separated yet. Okay, we don't have time to get into it now, but I will say that we think the eukaryotic cell evolved by one prokaryotic cell eating another one. So again, two species becoming one, but it's hard to say exactly what moment the, that happened. So just remember, life is messy. And evolution is how life changes. So it's kind of a messy process and it happens over many, many years. So if you look at any one moment, things might not be so clear all the time. Okay, so I know it's time for us to go. Um, but please, we need those spoons and knives. We need your bird beaks back. You can, however, keep your candy. Okay.